Hey gang, it's Paul, the absentee father of Proteus Debate. So Solomon's like your cool stepdad who's around and, you know, he's he's a nice guy, but you, you don't necessarily vibe with him. And anyway, I'm back from the store. I've got my cigarettes or whatever. And uh, I just tried to record this video. It recorded for 11 minutes and then stopped and I didn't realize it. So I'm going to give it one more shot. And if it fails, then you're never going to see it. So that's awesome. Let's get right into it. I only have two things I want to talk to you about today. And both of those things are about the critique, the K, the criticism. And I find in my experience with competitors as a coach and as a competitor myself, that a lot of people find the K a difficult concept to understand. And there's a lot of reasons for that. In no small part, the fact that a lot of debaters are talking really fast and doing their very best to obfuscate and kind of doing a landmine debate rather than actually developing arguments. But I think that your ability to answer the K is drastically limited by your viewpoint on what the K is and how it functions. And my hope today is through the two things I'm going to tell you, you'll be better prepared to answer the K. I have two disclaimers. The first thing I want to say is that I by no means was like a K debater for lack of a better term. I read the K a lot, senior and junior year. I won those rounds a lot. I answered the K a lot. I won even more of those rounds. And so I'm approaching this from the perspective of answering the K, not writing the K. I'll do that video later. But to be clear, if there's K debaters who disagree with me, that's awesome. This is what has worked in my experience. If you think I'm wrong, then don't do it. I don't care. Secondly, this is intended to be very basic level. This is not intended to be an incredibly technical or difficult video for any person to understand. My hope is to help individuals who've struggled with the K, have never heard of the K, but who are somewhat familiar with the debate. And so if you don't think this is comprehensive, you think it's wrong, again, you can leave. I don't care. And yeah, enjoy. Two things I want to talk to you about. The first thing is something that uh, a great debate mind said to me one time, which was my first year as a graduate student when I was coaching for the University of the Pacific. I was at the NPDA, the National Parliamentary Debate Association National Championship Tournament, and I was hanging out with some folks from Texas Tech. And at that time, one of the coaches at Texas Tech was a dude named Joe Proventure, Joe Pro, as people call him, who I have all the time in the world for when it comes to debate ideas. I think they just have a great debate mind. And what they said to me that I found super interesting, because we were kind of talking about debating stuff, we're at a debate tournament, the debate tournament for us. And what Joe said, which is the first thing I want you to think about, is... There is no such thing as a critique. And what do I mean by that? Bear in mind, this is primarily in the context of parliamentary debate. And in parliamentary debate, we have a very specific format for how we approach the criticism, as opposed to an evidentiary debates like Lincoln Douglas or policy, because in those formats, you just read evidence and that ultimately constitutes a K but people don't necessarily label the various parts of that K. But in partly, generally, eight to nine out of 10 rounds, the K has four parts, which is the framework of the K, the links of the K, the impacts of the K, and the alternative. And what Joe contended at that time, and this may have changed, is that there's no such thing as a K. There are only Counter plans, disads, and impact framing. And Joe contended that ultimately this is what Ks are in the context of Parley at least. Framework, obviously, is impact framing. This is where we're going to talk about which impacts and kind of arguments ought to be prioritized. The links and impacts are the disad, the disadvantage, for those of you who don't know what disad means, and if you don't know what disad means, Stop watching this video. Go watch a video that covers disads because that's going to be way more common and a better use of your time and it's kind of dumb to skip steps. And obviously the alternative, which is the advocacy portion of the critique most of the time, is going to be the counterplan. This might be wrong. Maybe this isn't correct. Maybe this isn't how you want to conceptualize the K. Maybe you think that Ks are just about questioning assumptions. You don't need advocacy. You don't need whatever, right? All that stuff's great. You can do that. That's fine. I don't care. 
But pretending this is right for a second, and that I'm not a complete idiot, how does understanding the criticism through this lens impact our ability to answer it? Well, let's talk about it. How would we answer impact framing? Pretend there's no K. They write a counter plan and a diset with impact framing. Well, there's two things you do primarily. And again, we're simplifying. First is win access to your arguments. Obviously, if we're the app, and let's pretend we're the app for most of this, right? This will apply against the neg to a certain degree, but to a lesser degree. Let's pretend we're the app. They write an AK. Win access to our arguments. What does that mean? There's two approaches to this. First approach is count our arguments, meaning the judge should allow you to weigh the app. And you'll explain this in the specific context, right? For whatever reason, our arguments, impacts, links, et cetera, fiat potentially are worth evaluating. Don't only weigh the critique arguments. And that's strategic because you're kind of meeting them in the middle. Judges are probably more amenable to you saying, we're not saying only our stuff matters. We're saying our stuff should matter to a certain degree. It certainly should be valid in the round. Don't pretend we didn't just talk for seven minutes straight before they came up. Now, alternatively, you could say only count our arguments. And this is where you read frameworks that say things like uh, roll about his vote for the fiat and policy option that saves the most lives. And then you read arguments about why the alternative is obviously not a fiat and policy option. Policy is good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is also strategic because realistically, there's zero incentive for a K to allow you to weigh the app. And in fact, if you read framework that doesn't preclude the evaluation or prioritize your impacts over the app, you didn't read framework, you just wasted two to three minutes. Because the only purpose of K framework is to give you access and deny your opponent access from a strategic point of view. So what else would we do other than win access arguments? We just say, that seems wrong. Those arguments aren't good, right? Whatever thing they said, whatever truth claims they made about epistemology or whatever, ontology, Nah, not how it works. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't seem like a good metric of value in the debate. We've won access to our stuff. Now we're going to say that yours is just bad. Okay. Well, how do we answer dissets? Well, if you're a Proteus follower, or what I mean, Sans students, we have told you that our sort of framework for that is button. And we have a video on this. So if you look up the button model, that should help you understand it. But button is no brink non-unique, link turn, impact turn, outweighs, no uniqueness. No uniqueness is different than non-unique. No uniqueness is like, you just literally don't have uniqueness, so we can't tell the direction of this disad, it's linear, it's bad. Non-unique is, the uniqueness actually goes in the other way, so it's linear and bad, but for a different reason. A lot of time people read things like turns and then they just say turn this, but there's no like uniqueness for it. And it's kind of like a weird argument conceptually because turns are essentially just disads, but people skip steps. Anyway, ignoring all that, if you don't know what button is, if you don't know how to answer disads, then you shouldn't be watching this video. Hopefully these things make sense to you, but generally speaking, you'll read some combination of defense, offense, reasons why the disad doesn't matter, is outweighed, you're better than it. Let's go to the counter plan. In terms of the counter plan, there's sort of a more rigid approach, I suppose. And if I was telling someone, I would kind of go in this order. I would say read a permutation. And a permutation is perm text and justification. So here's our text. We can do both. Do now, delay, whatever kind of permutation you're reading, etc. But then you also need to read a reason why that permutation is legitimate. Because almost certainly the K block or the counter plan block had reasons why it's not. And you need to answer them. Second thing we need to do in that instance, uh, and it didn't do a B for me, which makes me sad, so let's hope it does it now. B, it didn't, whatever. We're gonna keep moving. Uh, <laughs> uh, the B sub point is net benefit to the permutation. This doesn't make sense, the way people tend to do it in parliamentary debate. They read net benefits like juxtaposition or synthesis or whatever, I was certainly guilty of this in my time, but that's like operating on a different level 
you've it's no longer about the plan text how can the rather let me put it this way this is an adam testerman thing he said to me uh senior year finals steve hunt classic where we lost anywho adam testerman was like i don't think it makes any sense to read net benefits of the permutation other than the af the only benefit for a permutation is the af because anything else is intrinsic which means you've added something that wasn't there previously which is probably not good for debate but ignoring that for some reason judges are still really into having that benefit to the permutation so you should probably read one the c point it oh, this is good i love this anyway pretend the formatting isn't terrible i apologize uh the c point is f is a disad to the alt and the way you explain this is if the f solves the f and if the k doesn't solve the f the impacts of the app are disadd to the K. Then you say K doesn't solve AF or K impacts. Then you say AF alone is preferable. So like advantage of the app, whatever you want to say, right? Explain why the app specific mechanism is preferable. And then you read an independent offense against the alt or the k sorry my dogs are barking and then lastly you want to make sure you attempt uh, attempt to relink the disad to the counter to the counter plan. and i said k here but obviously pretend it's counter plan right so cp doesn't solve af or cp impacts Independent offense against the CP, right? The counter plan. Why is this a useful framework? Why is this a good idea? Well, I want to hone in on this part specifically, the relink, right? In counter plan disad debate, it's always strategic to try and link the disad to the counter plan because in an unconditional counter plan disad debate, the debate is only about the disad. If you win the disad, you win. In a conditional counterplan disad debate, it's still a really good idea because it's going to give you credence on things like condo theory should you read them because it looks bad if they were like contradictory, if they linked to their own position and you still have answered and things of that nature. So there's no real disad to you trying to relink them. It's especially true in the case of the criticism, I think, because a lot of criticisms in their framework or in their sort of ethic or thesis are about language performance and approach to debate. And obviously, if their language performance and approach relink, that looks bad. You could make murder versus manslaughter analysis about how relinks to your own K are worse than links to the app, things like that. Very basic. But you know how to answer impact framing slash calculus, a disad, and a counter plan. So you should primarily know how to answer the criticism because that's essentially all it is. I want to note here, what is the relationship between a counterplan and a disad a lot of the time in counterplan disad debate? Well, a lot of times the disads people read don't have uniqueness and they're counting on the counterplan to generate it. And that is absolutely true in the case of a lot of criticisms. Let's take cap for a second. You know, this is not a good cap K, but just for the sake of explanation, they say the app's capitalist. The AF says, aren't there 800 million other things that are capitalist in the status quo and that will happen post-plan? The NAG says, oh yeah, I guess you're right. And the AF says, well, I guess we win. And then they do. If they don't have an alternative. But if they have an alternative, which is their counterplan essentially, they get to sort of fiat uniqueness for how they would resolve the status quo capitalist issues and future capitalist issues. And so there's a relationship here that you need to understand. What's the second thing I want to talk about? We can make everything even more simple because really there's only three kinds of arguments I think you need to know to answer the K and to answer most of, which is, nuh uh, it's the opposite. Ooh, that's the wrong it's. I'm going to fix just this one, every other one you're dealing with from now on. It's the opposite and actually dot dot dot, as I like to call it. And what do each of these mean? Well, nuh uh, is. No, you're wrong. It's the opposite is 
the AF is in the other direction and actually is essentially your impact term where you say actually that is a good slash bad thing. Let's go through this. Nuh uh on K arguments. They say epistemology comes first. Nuh uh, you're wrong. Doesn't make any sense. Literally makes no sense to try and prioritize epistemology or ontology. They clearly work together. That's not where that concept comes from or not what that concept means. Also, your explanation of epistemology doesn't make sense. Also, you don't know what our epistemology is. Things of that nature. Nuh uh, you're wrong. It's the opposite. Afs in the other direction. You said we're capitalists. We're definitely not. We hate capitalism. Think it's super bad. Super down for the rev. In fact, the app's the best thing to get us to the rev sooner. Creates the material conditions for it. Uses the resources of the state against them. There have been socialist revolutions involved in the state before. Blah, 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 blah. And then lastly, actually, that's a good bad thing. In the context of cap, actually cap's pretty dope. Here's why. You know, green tech, whatever people say. Pharmaceuticals, I suppose. Those three things, those three approaches in simplifying it in that way, rather than trying to think, what's the link term for this? What's that? Just make the debate so much more simple. Nuh-uh, they're wrong. It's the opposite. That's not what the app is. Actually, actually, your thing is good or bad. We disagree fundamentally on the premise. I want to make a note on this last one about actually. Obviously, if they read like an anti-blackness K, it probably would behoove you to not impact turn anti-blackness or racism and say it's a good thing, because that would be stupid. And arguments that are true tend to be good, and arguments that are objectively bad or morally reprehensible tend to not do that good unless you have the kind of judge who purely evaluates on the flow, uh, and those judges are dumb and shouldn't do that because that's how bad things happen. Anyway, that's kind of my soapbox for now. That's just what I want to talk about. I think that it's very easy when you first start learning about the K to mystify it and treat it like it's something that it's not and it's something special. But in the context of Parley, where there's not evidence and all this stuff, and frankly, there's not enough time for people to prepare for everything, you need to have a framework for how you approach answering it. And this is as simple as I think I can really make it for you. If this was policy debate, there's disclosure. You could look up the teams that you think you might debate that are in your kind of bracket, for lack of a better word. And then find out what they read, do the research and all that stuff. But in Parley, given that we find out the topic 20 to 30 minutes ahead of time, from the perspective of like, I don't even know, like it's the prisoner's dilemma or something. It just doesn't make sense from like a game theory perspective to do it. Because if they do defend the topic and you were not prepared for it, like you just prepped against their KF, you're going to lose and you're going to look dumb because you didn't prepare for the topic. If they do prepare their K, they're still going to be more in their wheelhouse than you, but like you're just guessing at that point, right? Like you can ask other people what they read, but there's no actual case talk for you to understand the specifics. You go to your friend, you're like, what did they read? And they said, oh, the death bad K or death good K. And you're like, oh, awesome. That definitely gives me all the information I need to know how to answer that. Certainly not the case. And lastly, even if they were going to read a K, there's no guarantee they'll read the K you thought they were going to read. And so it's just frankly not possible for you to be prepared for all of the various options. Certain schools have like seven different pocket Ks they can read. And there's just not enough time in the day or in prep for you to do all that stuff. You need to be memorizing it ahead of time or find other ways to simplify those debates, whatever. So instead, if you just think about all Ks as being impact framing, most Ks, let's say 9 out of 10, whatever, again, there's instances where it's not true impact framing of counter plan dishead strategies then you can answer it in that matter and if you need to simplify it even more all you really need to say is the nah -uh, it's the opposite in actually again this is super simplified again this is primarily to parley again i'm not necessarily the king of k but i think if you just do these things you're going to win eight out of ten rounds I think that only the very best teams in the country actually understand how to explain their arguments in a way that avoids this kind of stuff. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you. I'll try and do more stuff lately. I'm back from the grocery store after all this time. I told you I'd come back. Have a good day.